pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, we might get out of here before 9 tonight. Looks like the agenda is strong somewhat. Uh, this is November 3rd, uh, Tuesday, of course. All the meeting over. Brown Quorum, please. Keen? Here. Fisher Brown? Here. Sparks? Olson? Here. Napola? Here. Gambino? Here. Grant? Aye. <laughs> Somebody like to approve the minutes? Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the minutes from the October 20th, 2015 meeting. Second. Any comment? All point? Keen? Yes. Fisher Brown? Yes. Olson? Abstain. Mapala? Yes. Gambino? Yes. Grant? Aye. One, two, our counts available. Robert? Mr. Mayor, I uh, regularly approve the accounts payable as presented. I'll second. Any comment? Call please. Fisher Brown? Yes. Olson? Yes. Nacola? Yes. Gambino? Yes. Grant? Aye. Team? Yes. What do we have on the special orders uh, for it? Boards or standing committees. Did you have any? Yes, he has something. I'll slow you down slightly. Bill Spores, Parks Commission. Commissioner. Uh, I think you probably, hopefully, all have noticed the uh, new harbor sign that went down at the entrance to, to the uh, Coast Guard. Um, many thanks to Jim Hayes. We really did the layout and the planning and, and uh, old stoners spent considerable time getting it ready and, and then our crew on, on the day went in with uh, Robert, uh, what's Robert's last name? I look at my neck. Everybody, everybody calls me Fuzzy Bob. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They did a Nickerson. Nick, Richard Nickerson, I believe. Nickerson. Yes. Nickerson. And Ron Dillon and uh, Ken White all worked. Got it in. Today it got completely uncovered, I believe. And so there's an anchor. The anchor, as you all know, will go up next to it. The holder has not been made yet, but it will be made as soon as we figure out the position. So that came out, I thought, extremely well. And great thanks, especially to Jim Hayes and to the city's city crew for getting it in. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you probably know what we call Brantford Street next to the bed and breakfast south of, or north of the uh, oil, oil Park. That's coming along, and I'm sure Brady has some more reports to give on that. That's worked out very well. And I think you all probably know that thanks to Perry, the lumber that what has gone into it, the timbers came from Pier 1, from, from the tsunami damage. So I'm sure she has some more stash somewhere. But I better. <laughs> we do. We do. So that's what's happening at the moment. Uh, and things are progressing well. And very good crew. And I just sit, sit back and try to take credit while they do all the work. My compliments to your crew and you, and it's a great placement for that display. Couldn't have been a better spot. How's the next door neighbor then? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Oh, you are. Oh, yeah. We're talking about Bradford Street now. Yeah. yeah. We don't have a next door neighbor down here. We're trying to. <coughs> we're putting a large wall there at Bradford Street. Uh, okay. We'll get some tall bushes. Okay. Very well. Twenty foot artwork line. 
Thanks, Bill. Do we have any public comments tonight? All right, moving along. Unfinished business. League of Oregon City, small cities, region, quarterly meeting. Uh, the question being the catering. Uh, uh, how to best handle it? Shall we go through uh, Century Market up there possibly and get a sandwich? plate and maybe some veggies, do it that way. Uh, I notice all the regional meetings that I've been to the last uh, two years now have pretty much gone to that, uh, uh, to the sandwiches and soda pop or whatever. And it, uh, we've already voted, I think our last meeting, at $300 to put this on and it'll be well under that, I'm sure. Uh, you have the the count, the head count yet, Barry? The last head count I had, seven, it's about 12 people. And that includes uh, those of you that could attend. Uh, does anybody else have any other suggestions? I'd say that's probably about the most appropriate. They've got the, you know, the, the facilities and the setup to be able to do something like that and stay within the budget, um, unless somebody else would like to, you know, step up and, and you know, offer to, you know, to do something different. Um, I'd say that's, you know, and especially since I know that's coming up fairly soon. Um, sounds reasonable to me. Do we have a local caterer within Deco Bay? I thought I there's no, a used to. Not anymore. Used to. Uh, excuse me, Barry did bring up. Yeah, uh, I have heard. I have to confirm, but I have heard that the bakery does catering. So I can check on the Depot Bay Bakery. That is right it. here. Um, see next to the stopping more Sea Breeze. Sea oh. I I've heard that, but I I'm not sure. Well, it's but, a, a, a point of I would just be more inclined to use somebody within Depot Bay to support local business. I could check there's somebody. Yeah, actually, I, I agree with you, but that's the only grocery store we have. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And uh, do you think there's going to be more than 30 people there? Oh, no, I don't think so. The way you know, there may not. Uh, perhaps he could do it for $10 a head or less or $10. It would still make the budget. Maybe we should just ask. I can, I can you know, one, one thing I, I, I wanted to comment on a little bit is that I'm surprised there isn't more attendance because the last time Robert and a bunch of people went out and there was a grand meal and nobody paid for a thing. And well, so, uh, what time of year was that? Oh, this August. was, uh, it, what it, was it ended meeting? up being in August. August. Yeah, it was yeah. going to be February. Well, it's going back a year or two, you know. All right, this is like the holiday season. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, though, it's just, uh, yeah, because Christy from Lee of the Cities, um, she had provided that she had a head count of seven. She'll update it this week sometime. And then with um, those of you that can make it, so that bumped it up for wow. Right, and I might add too, there was a lot of things involved in that neighborhood for kids when we put it on in, the, in their building. Right. So that was uh, an attempt to show off our, uh, our young people's uh, home away from home in the afternoon. <laughs> things that were going on over there. Uh, this meeting is going to be at the community center, and uh, it's a no thrills thing. It starts at one, it's over or at eleven. Excuse me, eleven. It's over at uh, one, uh, and uh, it's the small cities that belong to the League of Oregon cities on the uh, the northern part of, of the coast. So basically, that's another reason why we're not going to have a, a big attendance. Uh, Newport won't be represented because it's not considered a small city, even though I think it is. But anyway, there's a lot of reasons. So we just need an approval on on that. Mm -hmm. Want to show hands on well, that? Could, could Perry's going to check and 
Yeah. We'll just deal with what's most effective, like the pretty choose perhaps. I'll check with the bakery and see um, if they even do. Like I said, I just, I just heard that, and um, and see if that can be worked out. And if not, I'll definitely go to Lincoln Beach Market. Okay. Uh, yes. I'll move that uh, the council authorize the uh, uh, Prairie to make that decision. I'll second that. Mr. Zayo Gallman. Call on that, please. Olson? Yes. Mackala? Definitely, yes. Gambino? Yes. Grant? Aye. Keen? Yes. Fisher Brown? Yes. You're stuck with it. <laughs> it's in your capable hands. All right. We'll have something delicious. Uh, on to uh, item B. That's the harbor fuel rate. I had a discussion with Curry one day this last week, and uh, she recommended that, the, that they have a, a flat rate guideline. Would you explain that to everyone? Um, yeah, looking at, I know prior discussions, we, we, we talked about a percentage, um, having our fee on top of what we pay for the fuel instead of the percentage. And I still would recommend that we stay with what we've been doing. We set up so many cents per gallon over what we pay for the gallon. Um, mm -hmm. I, I see it, there will be less, uh, less confusion, bottom line. Yeah. I think it's our best shot at recouping our expenses. Um, the gas prices and diesel prices, they're still fluctuating. And I, I, I don't think I can quite say wildly, but pretty close. Um, so I, I just, I would still recommend the flat fee. It's going to be less work for you too, right? Well, it's, it's just, it's going to be easier for the customers. Um, if, they, if we can tell them we charge you 35 cents over what we pay, they go, okay, they know. Um, if we start talking for cents to them, then we'll start calculating, and it, I, I think it will just add, add to some of that, that confusion. Also, um, I, I would like to know, six months ago now, more than six months ago, um, had done a projection on an average, a five-year average of, of the cents over the gallon we paid that we needed to recoup our costs. For a five-year average, we were looking at 42 cents a gallon. Um, I had time to crunch some numbers. I've added in the last two fiscal years, revenues and expenses. And so now in the seven year average, we're looking at about 38 to 40 cents a gallon to, on that, based on that seven year average. And again, I would, I would, um, I would still recommend let's just, let's just pick so many cents per gallon that we're gonna pay, no matter what we pay for the fuel, that is what we add to whatever we pay. And when I was speaking with the mayor, he said, and we should review it, and absolutely. Um, I think October is a good time of the year to compile all the information, bring it to the city council for an annual review and see if we need to adjust it. So, um, After Jerome has his say, I want to add to that, Bernie, uh, and that's something that we need to consider as well. It's a little late now. Go ahead, Jerome. Oh, I was just going to say, I uh, had a little discussion after last meeting with, with Perry, and I came to concur with her opinion, okay, about a flat rate. And uh, after also uh, uh, glancing at the, uh, the numbers and the, the shortfall, we're basing, uh, from, what, from when we started with the increase in the, um, and I could be wrong, but correct me, in the increase in, uh, in the rate, um, that we're charging for fuel, that um, we, we were only dealing with, uh, albeit the, the busiest part of the year, we, it, it, we went through that, but the shortfall was gonna be half of what it was last year, but that was only for a half a year. So um, that would indicate that we're pretty close to being uh, uh, right, up to, you know, right on the, uh, the amount, the 35 cents, so between 35 and and 42 cents, if whatever the, the council, I, I would support you know, a raise or, you know, but within the, the parameters of, and the flat rate, I, 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 I think is a good idea. 
All right, my comment was, oh, go ahead, no, you first. No. Right. I didn't see your hand up, sorry. No, that's okay. And this might give you a little more to think about as well, but now we're into the winter season. We've got, uh, I think, over 50% of the tank is still full of our last delivery. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we won't be taking another, another delivery for some time. And we don't know what the fuel prices are going to be doing between then and now. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, that will go down, but if that happens, we're still going to have to sell them the price that we paid for, for the, what we have there. So mm -hmm. that's another thing that we, in the future, will uh, try to consider that uh, as the season wears down to minimize that delivery somehow. Right. We'll get and a stabilizer in there, too. Oh, yeah, right. And it doesn't last forever. Right. It's got a shelf life. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, I was just, um, this is for, According to us, this is figures for the first quarter. Uh, on the far right, right column, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so we still have three more quarters to catch up or, or do better than we did last year. So mm -hmm. this this right here, we're on track just like Jerome said. That, 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 that was my And that first quarter is, is pure 35 cents a gallon mm -hmm. because the prior year, 2014-15, we went from 20 cents to 35 cents on like April 22nd. So about nine weeks of that fiscal year, we, we right. had that 15 cent increase on what we were charging. But, um, yeah. well, we need to buy a high so low. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that should work. <laughs> Your changes. Go ahead. That was, says, we uh, went from the 20, some, uh, 20 cents to 35 in April of what year? This year. This year. <clears throat> so I'm doing my thought that we want to keep our rates competitive so we're not buying in the valley and trailer and over here. But yet to also bring in just a little bit more for maybe unexpected items that we're, you know, if we're breaking even now, but if we need a new pump or stable or you know some type of equipment replacement or something like that that we built a little bit of, of reserve for some of those so if 35 cents is the break even right now you know I, I would think we'd want to be looking at 38 or 39 or 40 you know something to, to help build a little bit of reserve but yet remain competitive in the fuel price uh, at, at the dock side if I might, that's a very good point because that fuel station is nine years old. And we've had some minor repairs, but they've been very minor. But as you know, as things get older, um, things break, more things break. So, good point. Isn't 35 a not yet break even point? 35 cents? I think it's going to be that. very close. Like yeah. I say, looking at that, I, I added the last two fiscal years to that five-year average, mm -hmm. and based on the figures, um, 38 to 40 cents would be a break-even. Based on that, those seven years, again, if we have some huge maintenance thing, we're, we're just going to have to be How many gallons is that tank full? 4,000 gallons. So 2,000 are still on tax. Yes. So two. About four thousand dollars are still in the tank there, Robert, which takes that number down to about two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Because it's all already cumulative, we've already paid for that, right. so it's close. Well, yeah, we could. Uh, uh, I, I, uh, uh, so I, I'm, I'm sensitive to what uh, Colin is saying about raising a little bit. We might, uh, we might also visit this uh, in the spring. That's what I would think. Yeah. Going into fizzy season, yeah. yeah. exactly. What are we going to do? We're going to add a couple cents a gallon now when nobody's buying the house? Yeah. You know, that's so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll make some good points. Good so job, if, if the council would like, uh, we'll do schedule another six month review. Yeah. So we'll yeah. be talking April of next it's year. It's a great idea. I'll make a note. Thank you. All right. Any uh, yeah, no, item C is uh, Lincoln County Community 
and economic development grant opportunity. Randy's got some yeah. numbers um, on yeah. the two different projects that we've talked about. One is replacing the staircase, and one is to do an engineering yeah. study yeah. to do a pedestrian, maybe even ADA walkway along. Yeah, there's. It could be a regular, uh, just a you know possibility of a ramp if we can. It may have to be an ADA, um, but uh, I talked to an engineer from Civil West. They gave us a ballpark. He came out and just kind of compared it with other engineering that they've done for ramps, similar to what the length is and the height. So we could follow the guardrail in one, one idea, have one switch back in that portion, be on the uh, south side of the current guardrail, build out a sidewalk with a railing, there'd be a switch back and then we'd enter down towards the, where the curb ends, and then have like a sidewalk continue down to the bay along where the new sign is, it would be a rock sign. The other idea is to pull the stairway out, and it'd be quite, this is real expensive, was to put several switchbacks down, and to get you directly down to the gravel bottom of the stairs where they are currently. So that was a lot more. Um, they said the engineering would be anywhere from 50 to $60,000 and that, you, you know, depending on geological test studies, it may get to be more. They find out that the bank isn't very stable. So that's just, just for the engineering to write up uh, enough information to have a contractor take those plans and build it. So. So 50 to 60,000 just for the designs or the complete yeah, project with, with the designs? With the design, yeah, with the plans ready to go to contract. It does not include the cost. Of the it does, that's what I would get. Yeah. Just, just engineering. Just the engineering, yeah. Because there's pre design and then there's full engineering. That would be full engineering. And the reason to put a ramp down there, it's ADA compliant. That's, yeah. it. that's, that's why the cost is so high because it would be eight. Yeah, there's so much uh, you know, particulars involved, it's very layered. So, uh, is Randy, is it possible do you think that because of, it, it is ADA uh, that we could you know, get some federal funding of some kind? Um, it's possible, yeah. There's, yeah. How would we um, get I, we, have, we just have to do some research. It's possible. I mean, that's what we're, we're getting a, a, a grant, hopefully, from the county. The only other option would be to rebuild the stairs. That's what the other side was. Um, the only other, because really, if you look at it, say if we did have a ramp and you got to the top of the stairs now and spent all this money in engineering and construction, you still have that hill to go up that's not compliant either. I mean, that's another, so you really, you, you fix one problem, but you, you now you're in a wheelchair, say, and you're up here, how are you going to, you know, you can ride it. Yeah. So it may have to be, and for you, I talked about this way back, further west before you could be compliant mm -hmm. and then fall down to the stair and then down to the community. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we could rebuild the stairs and maybe push for uh, a possible walkway along the guardrail that's not ADA compliant, but it would be a, a walkway that wouldn't involve stairs. Um, you know, maybe put something like that together at a later date but go ahead and rebuild the stairs that are pretty dilapidated right now. What do you think the cost for the stair rebuild would be? Got it. I had a contractor go over there and uh, with with the Ford footings and posts and all. And this, uh, I asked, because somebody asked about a, a possible um, uh, intermediate area to sit like on a bench and then go up, so it's two-tiered. Um, it was uh, seven to eight thousand dollars for material drawings and then construction for all three. Well, so it's better than the street on that uh, street city wheelchair access. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's pretty tight. Yeah. It's so tight there in any way with vehicles, yeah. but it, it it's a possibility, and I've seen this before, where you could actually put a sidewalk on the south side of. Directionally challenged here, so south side of the uh, guardrail. Yeah. Well, or be west. That'd be 
Just, right uh, on yeah, okay. Uh, 50,000 foot. The, the, my limited uh, exposure to structural engineers when it comes to construction like this is that they will they will produce the, uh, as part of the, I think, the detailed drawings of, of the construction that takes some of the guesswork out for the, the contractors. But, yeah. Uh, uh, it would be really but, but, intricate and, and you know, it'd be elaborate thing we're going to have to put together. Right. Just like if you look at the behind the Coast Guard station in Newport, it's pretty detailed. Yeah, you know, with the cost being set aside, I think it's important that we make that as accessible as we can because that would help direct people going down to our harbor and make it an easier way and a little bit mm -hmm. maybe more accommodating for somebody to get there. Right. But we have the events we have somebody brought to my attention too that the events we have are usually shuttled down if anybody's in a yeah. chair or stuff they're they're most likely to be shuttled down and uh, there is access if you go through I mean we could maybe push for the only way to get through with, with wheelchair and baby buggies or, or, or what is through the park and up the you know, behind because it's more gentle so you were saying on the stair rebuild is that uh, your bid for Metal stairs or replacing it with metal? Um, well, the metal so stairs were ten, to, and, and that was without a landing. It was it was uh, switched back on the metal stairs, but I, I did get that from back when we did the budget. Um, it was an option, and we had Mike Pauley Welding give us a, a ten thousand dollar bid on uh, metal, yeah. galvanized with metal galvanized railing. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, um, isn't this uh, <clears throat> excuse me? Isn't this grant? Doesn't this grant have a cap of fifteen thousand? Oh my God! Mm -hmm. So there's some consideration. You know, there's another problem involved in that too. And that uh, that street is far from ADA compliant, all the way from the top of the hill uh, mm -hmm. down to where the stairs are, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you have to be an athlete of sorts to run a wheelchair either up or down that section of the street. So we got more than just one problem in that short area coming up from the community hall. So a lot to think about on that one. My last input. I think I would be in favor to get the county grant of 15 build metal stairs that are going to last. They're going to be better, safer. And then at a later time, if we can ever find funds to do something different, we could. But it's, it's making a bad situation better than it is. It's not ideal, but it's better than what we have. Yeah. And I think it fits the budget. Mm -hmm. You want to make a motion here, Council? Let me hear your motion, sir. You oh, me? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to make my first motion. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I would make a motion that uh, we apply for this grant uh, to the county um, and and have move forward with the, the plans for a metal staircase uh, and replace the the wooden ones that are the existing yeah. wooden stairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other idea would be pressure treated and outdoor wood. Yeah. I'll second that. The metal wood last. All right. Big problem to spend enough time on it. Call, please. Napoli. Yes. Gambino. Yes. Grant. Right. Team. Yes. Fisher Brown. Yes. Olson. Yes. When's the deadline to put in for that? Less than 48 hours. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> That's what I thought. Right. <laughs> <Myron. laughs> yeah. Okay, on to the problem of the sandwich board sign. Uh, the property that these signs are sitting on belongs to Odron. And there we're, we're uh, doing their job for them in a way. Anybody got some input on that? I just, uh, out of curiosity, this uh, sign complaint was generated by somebody who used to have the space that the bakery's in now. Is that correct? Because no. he's from uh, 
I thought I read somewhere that they had a business in downtown. Did did have a business? They lived somewhere in the valley or over to the east of us. Right. Yeah. He did yeah. have a business. He did have a sandwich board that um, he was told to remove. Right. And so he claims to have tripped over someone's sandwich board. How clumsy that was. And uh, now he wants. He doesn't live in this town. He wants to exact some revenge, or what is I this about? I don't know. He's contacted me a few times, um, concerned about. Did he hurt himself? No, he's. He said he ran right in, or you know, it's like right there in his face. And, I see. And then he's seen it a, a couple more times because I did uh, do a compliance letter to the bakery. Um, did a verbal after that, and they did remove it for a while, and then it returned. And then uh, the gentleman that did the original complaint, um, after a while, did the letter of last meeting, and uh, this is where we are now. So now, the, um, I guess what you just told us is that you've asked the uh, party to remove the sign. They removed it. And now the sign has returned, yeah. and then our uh, good Samaritan from the valley has complained once again. Yeah, it comes and goes. It's not like every day it's there. It just seems to be put out here and there, and uh, I guess a, a couple times now that uh, the complaintee has passed through, it's, it's there. And he reaches out to me every time. So. And I just, I haven't, you know, it, it, the only other thing I could do is let you find. It, you said that the, the signs are actually on ODOT property, though, yeah. right away. Yeah. So would it not be an ODOT issue then? Well, it, it is if they they don't enforce it, but it's in, in our ordinances for our sign ordinances. It states that uh, the city, you know, is is uh, the uh, enforcement officer. Mm -hmm. You know, has, has to even justify even through the city limits, okay. even if it is ODOT. Yeah. There's several issues like that, too. Sure. Compliance, uh, ordinance violations for everything. That's in, you know, yeah. There's amendments and ordinances that, that are on Highway 101. And so, so our job tonight expensive. is to what? Uh, we want to punish. Uh, a vendor down the street for having a sandwich for it. It's like that, right? Oh, I'm sorry, my friend. That's okay. That's all right. This is all relevant. So. Um, <clears throat> I'm just thinking of a of a uh, <laughs> the, the lawsuit lottery, litigation lottery possibilities. Um, if and we are, according to these, we are responsible to enforce it, mm -hmm. as you said, even though it's ODOT property. Um, so here we are sticking our neck out by allowing it to continue, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Now, Larry, um, Larry mentioned um, that Walford revised theirs. That, that was just going to be my, my suggestion that we look at revising this. Yes. If ODOT's not enforcing it, we need to look at our ordinance and see if we need to modify it. And, and then, well, well, I, I, was, we want to allow I was a vendor for many years, and I use that ODOT city thing to my advantage. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I did. But you know, I have been a vendor in this town. I know how difficult it is to do business in this town. And um, I don't know, it just seems a little draconian to beat up on somebody for a sandwich board. That's just my personal opinion on it. I kind of get the sense that um, the person who made the, made the complaint and has kind of nominated himself as the sandwich board monitor for Depot Bay <laughs> um, with, you know, all due appreciation for his diligence and, uh, you know, for his dedication and, uh, you know, devotion of his personal time to assist us with this matter. However, um, I kind of get the sense that he feels that if he was required at the time that he owned a business here in Nico Bay, that he was, was required to comply with something or all of this or whatever, and, and he's, he's identified somebody that in his opinion is not that, you know, that he's identified some sort of unfairness there that he now thinks needs to be redressed, and this is, I guess, the way he's chosen to to handle that, 
Um, I personally, I think that we should thank the nice gentleman for his observations and assure him with all due respect that we are handling it within the purview of our authority. Mm -hmm. And that is where the matter should rest in, a, in you know, as a reference to this gentleman. Um, city business is going to be handled by city council, not by you know, citizens. As we appreciate, of course, citizens identifying the problem, and we will do whatever is necessary to make sure that everyone is in compliance. That being said, there also is the issue of personal responsibility in that, um, you know, I know stumble bum that I can be that if I don't pick my feet up high enough when I walk down the sidewalk, I could probably trip and fall and hurt myself. And whose fault is that? Some people might say it's the, you know, the, the city who maintains the sidewalk. Some people might say, maybe you should pick your feet up. Maybe you should watch where you're going. Maybe it's somewhere in between. That's all I have to say. Oh, my thought is, if we turn the cheek to it, which uh, and I agree, we're sent with you. But if we turn the cheek and we set the presidents, that we can start turning the cheek at other city ordinances. And I don't know if that's something that we want to set the stage for. So we either need to enforce it, or we need to change it and make it compliant either way. My opinion. I I say that uh, perhaps it's time that we revisit that ordinance. Quite frankly. I mean, I don't think any, I, like it or love it, people are in business and they'll do whatever it takes for people to notice their business sure. as they drive by. You know, I work in like a city part-time now and they have a no sandwich board sign and guess what? There's sandwich boards everywhere. I mean, we have a guy on the south end of the bridge now who's got a doggone boat parked out there and it says whatever for sale. And we have the, uh, the uh, furniture shop down at the south end with the piles of driftwood. I mean, it just seems to me that maybe it's time that we talk about this and we uh, bring this up at council as far as looking at that ordinance. Sure. Or why fight it? The you sure. uh, I concur with uh, uh, Mr. Tank and, uh, and the council president, uh, Wilson. I, uh, uh, and I'm sympathetic to your, your, your viewpoint. Um, Councilwoman, uh, it's just that you've heard maybe that old, that uh, old saying, and I'm, I'm not sure who said it, I've heard it repeated by a number of politicians of both stripes, but we're a nation of laws, not men. In other words, uh, men make, uh, if, you know, do things on their own discretion, what they think is good or not. And when, if uh, laws are, 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 that are in the books, that, that, that's what we depend upon for fairness across the board, that everybody gets treated equally. And so um, I, I think in this case that the, um, I commend the city, they, they, they took the complaint. Um, and I will uh, mention that I, somewhere along the way, my business got mentioned uh, and, uh, about this, this sign ordinance. I pulled my sign immediately as soon as I, I knew. I, was not, I did not receive a letter. I just wanted to, to get out of the foray, and I, I don't have a problem not ever putting it back up. That being, being said, um, uh, our, our city supervisor wrote the gentleman a letter, and uh, the, the violator, uh, I, I think we've done what we can do to, to, to stop it, unless we wanted to be punitive in, a, in some other way, and I don't know if even if there's a remedy but I think that uh, Council Van Olsen's uh, point of, of, of uh, revisiting the ordinance would be a good idea. Maybe schedule it for next week. Mm -hmm. Or maybe can we yeah. schedule it for after the 1st of January because we have a tight schedule with the holidays coming up. I was thinking uh, we used to have a sign ordinance uh, committee. Um, I think the planning commission takes that on now, I'm pretty sure. Is it? Is it? The sign committee was abolished some years ago, so review of sign permits is under the city planners. Oh, the city plan, yeah, the planning, yeah. yeah. So, so maybe get their opinion. I just wanted to reassure everybody that I am in no way, shape, or form advocating that we should let um, the person with the sign sticking out literally in the middle of the sidewalk in uh, the bakery. I should in no way 
can this person be let off the hook? Um, you know, everybody is expected to comply to the same rules, and I'm, I'm not in any way advocating that that, that person should get a pass, um, you know, or, did, or be allowed to just, you know, just say, okay, and then there it goes again. No, I mean, you know, that, that is a completely <coughs> fair for one thing to all of the, the compliant business owners who are very conscientious about making sure that they are following all of these rules. And, you know, so, yeah, you know, let's go ahead and revisit that if it needs to be revisited. But I also think we need to be diligent, diligent about enforcing the laws that are and the regulations that are already in, in effect. Can I make a motion? I make a motion that we would um, have Planning Commission draft a proposal for a revised um, sign ordinance to bring back to Council for us to review and provide input and discuss the changes that um, may be appropriate. Second that. Gentlemen? Call please. Gambino? Yes. Grant? Aye. Team? Yes. Fisher Brown? Yes. Olson? No. Mackle? Yes. I'm okay. I didn't say no. <laughs> I, 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 I want to hear. I want to hear. Well, I, just well, I, I guess the point is, is the my only point is, is that I think this is a city council topic and the planning commission's got a lot to do, but that's just my point of view. That's, 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 I, I don't disagree with Joe or anybody here about what we talk about. But, and, and I, I also want to commend the uh, uh, city supervisor. He's already taken action. Yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Thank and I, I can reach out to um, Mike Breed, the complaint team, um, tell him, give him an, an update, which I have through an email, just stating that uh, um, it's being handled um, with information through the city council, so it's kind of like basically an update of where we're at now. So, well, right. I want to make one thing clear on the record. I I very much appreciate Councilwoman Fisher Brown's thoughtful approach to decision making here. And I very very much do. Thank you very much. You are quite welcome. Thank you. Over. Side comment, Brady, do you know what a pinch book is? The, the, the what? A pinch book. A pinch book. We're not the game with some scary. That's an Italian <laughs> thing, isn't it? No. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Police use it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pinch book. Security. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Robert. Okay, we're finished with that one. For now. <laughs> Uh, item E, Cover Commission Membership, Recruitment, Advertising Strategy. I, for one, am not uh, in the mood for spending anything, anything on advertising. I think we're going to start by hanging up the, the uh, paper in the post office like we always have and, and see what comes of it. And then, uh, if nothing comes of it, we'll have to take a different path. That's how I feel about it. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. I was going to ask if we have any social media options. As in, does the city have a Facebook page that we could advertise on there? I know, Robert, I know, but you know, for those of us who plug in every morning, I mean, literally, I have my, I have my feed set up so that I have all my news and information personalized you know, I get all of the stuff that I that I want to get from all over the place. I mean, Southeast Alaska, up in the interior, I mean, Portland, you name it, everywhere. Um, and social media is, you know, everybody is connected into that these days mm -hmm. on their smartphones or on their laptops or their tablets or whatever. And if we, you know, if we don't have a Facebook page for the city, we should. We should. And we, and that would be a great forum to put that on. If, if that is something that the city council would like to do, I would ask the council to let staff provide you with information on how much staff time that will take, because it will take staff time. Every day, um, daily there's, input, there's a lot to it. Absolutely. It will take a lot of staff time. There are some legal issues when you're a public entity um, that we would need to address. So it's, it's, it's a little bit more involved than just the city getting a Facebook. So, 
If that's what the council would like to do, um, I would just ask for time to bring that information to you. All those things. Oh yeah, no problem. I, I would have to respectfully disagree and just go about advertising the same old way we have. Um, because this is a kind of this is an imminent situation where we need to get recruitment, and it's imminent that we get qualified um, candidates for the positions. And if, if if we're narrowing our search to right here, that really limits the pool. Versus if we expand our our horizon here on where we're reaching out to, we're going to get a larger pool of qualified candidates quicker and faster versus waiting to see how the recruitment goes and then we expand. I would say we just need to go into 100% and then uh, go from there. Go ahead, Jake. Um, you know, to set up the Facebook page, I don't disagree. It's probably a, a fine thing, but I think um, the comment was apropos about the time. And also it's going to take time to set that up. It's not something that and we could craft tomorrow morning and put it online. We can't. We do have another vehicle, though, right now that's available to us uh, as one option. I, I wanted to talk about another option also. Um, I've often looked at this as a, a call to arms. Um, mm -hmm. Come help your city. Come return the greatness to the harbor. Come, you know, whatever, the, whatever it is we say, we say. Um, <clears throat> we have a website, and Emma does a good job posting on the front of the website. And... Um, I wonder if uh, we could direct staff to look into Facebook and have them come back. That's fine by me. But in the interim, we go ahead and make sure it's front and center on our web page. So the first thing they see is come help the city. Come, whatever it is we decide, come, come figure out the problem. And also, I, wouldn't, uh, I wonder if it wouldn't behoove us uh, to pay for a paid advertisement, so to speak, uh, in the paper, I know it would cost a couple hundred bucks, but state what's going on, why we need people, and what they're going to get in return for doing. We could say like, come volunteer your time, we'll suck all the life out of you, and you'll get beat up by everybody else around you. Please plot. It's going to be very effective. Yeah, very funny. <laughs> I'm just joking when I say news. that. But you know, I know that we do have avenues through the paper to advertise this position and to sell this position. And I wonder if it wouldn't be who was to spend a couple hundred bucks, because you're right, Colin, um, this is an urgent issue. We have been without a harbor, working Harbor Commission since July, is that correct, June? June or July? Uh, July. July. And so now we're here at uh, the first of November, and even if we advertise and we get a lot of great buzz out there, we're not gonna seek this until the first of next year. I mean, because we have the holidays coming up and people are not going to be so into volunteering all their time right now. Mm -hmm. So we're now looking into the first of the year, and uh, I certainly would like to, excuse the expression, throw the stuff on the wall, and some of it's going to stick somewhere. And so I, would, I, I might advocate we spend a couple bucks, and we have the staff look at Facebook, and we get them to go ahead and post it immediately on our website. That's all. With you, you the post office. With Mayor, sure. I concur with your post picking up at the post office. Yeah, a lot of people go there. Uh, I concur with uh, potentially advertising. Um, I think a good advertising place to start that could go up real quick and not have to wait is News Looking County, which gets yes. in excess of two hundred thousand views. I think a month or even. A week mm -hmm. or something like that. Every, that. Everybody goes there. Actually, actually, you're right because uh, he has already done a piece on the harbor. He's done many yeah. pieces on the harbor. So yeah. if, we, if, uh, if we need to pay him a couple of bucks to, to have a little box there for us, uh, why don't we ask uh, Dave, uh, was it Dave Morgan? Dave Morgan, yes. Robert? He uh, read our lines. The man has ESP. Um, I think. Obviously, you probably listened to the audio or watched it, and I was charged with getting a hold of him, and I didn't. Sorry, Dave. Um, I didn't in time before this meeting. Well, he already did do something. I don't know if everybody saw, I saw it, it, but it literally was exactly what we asked. Yes. Mm -hmm. Depot Bay is looking for people who are mm -hmm. the Harbor Commission. So. 
Uh, this, would, you talk about it too. this would be a question for staff. Can we advertise on the water bills that go out with just a little highlighted red blurb or something? Check the check the city website for harbor vacancies or something like that. I mean, something where we're already sending out kind of money for it. You know, an extra rubber stamp. You know, it might not be that much of a cost. Or look. And we'd have to do the next mailing will be the end of December. Yeah. And we're very. We can put a little message on, but it's very. I don't even know if we can still do that. I, you know, here's a good question. Very, um, very what would the differential be if, um, you know, because right now we mail postcards that uh, sure. people get and, you know, send it to the landlord and send it to the individual property owner. Um, I wonder what it would cost as a mechanism to advertise some of these initiatives if we were to switch from that postcard um, uh, protocol into an envelope protocol where we could include the postcard inside but also know them like uh, if you ever seen the water bills in lincoln city or newport you get something with that right i mean or, or how about the garbage company you get something with them this is a prime way to advertise so I, following up on that i wonder if we shouldn't ask staff to figure out expense time and what it would take to, to change that venue and then we could start utilizing that more often newsletters uh, newsletters be stopped in there well i don't know but I have a feeling she might already have an answer. Oh, we have done that in the past when the timing's been right, when mm -hmm. the cities wanted to get some message out and, oh, we've got a water bill and, um, you know, coming up. Um, we have done that where we just use, put it in an envelope, put the bill in, in with the message that's going out. We have done that before. I, I was just sitting here trying to remember, I think the difference between a postcard and a, and a letter right now is about... I want to say 24 No, no, no. No, 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 no. 14 cents. Plus whatever the, the copy is. Right, yeah. So 14 cents, and there's how many retailers going up? 15,000. So it's an extra 250 bucks as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but her, her issue, though, is that she won't be sending that out to the end of the summer. Sure, I get that. So for this one, it's not uh, yeah. maybe appropriate, but maybe it's something we could have you look at so we can bring that to the council. And with this, I, I think I would advocate too if we could, um, in our advertising, uh, maybe have an open house to have people come and fill you out and Q&A and get to know what it's about versus just reading an advertisement when you're face to face and you can actually talk to some of the folks that are sitting up here. Mm -hmm. um, and get some real one-on-one -on -one Q and A. That might really help sway somebody to want to participate and, and volunteer. If I may expand on that just a little bit, could we have it on the agenda for our very next meeting? <coughs> and could have folks like Master Wet and like mm -hmm. Matt yes. be here, invite that the interested public, as you said, to be here. Let them know that some of the folks that know about Harbor. As a second right. party, some other people have questioned and requested information saying, what's it about? So I think we're going to be pleasantly surprised with the turnout on this. I do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it could be that we turn it out and we're only able to get one or two people per advertising cycle. And it might take two to four months to reconstitute it, but we should start now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here. So uh, maybe don't, forget should... the, but don't forget the uh, abuse part. The... Yeah, we've got to put that in there. Yeah. yeah and what it all can be. It's going to be publicly flawed. And state very clearly that no good deed will go unpunished. That's right. So what are we going to direct the staff? Can one, you can you look into the Facebook <coughs> thing? Tell us about that. I can look I, that, I think we should look at it. I think that's legitimate. I think, like what John was saying, I think our first meeting is News Lincoln County and Lincoln County Dispatch. And well, also the front of our web page. Exactly. They're, they're cheap. Yeah. I looked into advertisement for my business and it was like $75. Yeah. I mean, for the electronic, and he'll put it right in the middle of the blur and do real good. Um, it's fairly yeah. inexpensive advertisement. But, but right now, we could put it in the post office and put it up on the website right away. Right. 
and then we could uh, have staff come back and tell us how much it's going to cost to advertise it and also what the Facebook page might take. What about, can we post some of those advertisements in local businesses? I, I actually uh, well, probably could. I was, I'll go talk to uh, Ricky and Kathy. Maybe they'll want uh, to do us a piece. And, uh, you know, just have them come in and maybe just talk to us. Uh, on the Facebook, uh, I would, the, the approach I would take to find out if there's any other small cities already doing it. Yeah, yeah. Almost every city. If there are, uh, let's pick up the phone to their staff and find out how much time it takes. Yeah, that's and, good. That's that's excellent. Um, and then I will say just one more thing. Uh, sorry, man. Just uh, okay. with, along with that is that I understand that you know my limited understanding of Facebook is that if I've already got a Facebook account, I could actually start my own city of Depot Bay page. Yeah, we actually have a city councilor that has done that. Yeah. 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 Um, the nice thing, the cool thing about uh, Facebook is that okay, so you you know you can have you have friends, but you also can like organizations, you can like cities, places that you've been. I mean, it, it's endless, and and when you do that, every time that you know whatever organization or business or city. I mean, Walport, Yahats, I have both of them on my Facebook page. Anytime anybody posts anything on their page, it automatically goes to the news feed of everybody who has checked that they like that page. And that could be people who live there, that could be people who regularly vacation there, who've been there once and loved the place, went through, but every time they post something, everybody gets it. So to touch on that too is, people do where you check in, so you come to Depot Bay and you yeah. hit, I'm in, if they say, if they put on their news feed, downtown Depot Bay, Oregon, watching the whales, guess what? That Depot Bay is captured, and then it goes on to all of their feeds, and then they'll mm -hmm. see the city of Depot Bay's Facebook page yeah. just by them saying, I'm downtown Depot Bay. Yeah. That's if they're downtown that's Depot Bay, Bay. Yeah. if they're downtown Depot Bay, they probably wouldn't need to see well, no, they're just saying, I'm, at, I'm, I'm having lunch at Valley <coughs> Horn in Depot Bay, Oregon. And when they when they tag that Depot Bay, that, that keyword, that populates onto your feed yeah. with, with your Facebook. Yeah, it's um, pretty deep. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, that's, that's the way it works. And you can, you know, <coughs> what it is, it's an automatic check-in that is, is an app on most people's smartphone these days. You have to actively disable it. But what it does is that, say you go to, you know, a, someplace to, to buy a cup of coffee, Pirates for instance, and they have Wi-Fi. And you have, you know, you've got, well, I'm just saying for example. But if, unless, you, if you don't, you know, if you've got this, this enabled, it, your phone will automatically tell the Wi-Fi that will update to your Facebook page that you are at Pirates Coffee Company and it, you can even tag the people that you're with, and that, that again will go out to everybody on their friends list. You mm -hmm. can up, you, you do you can post digital photographs instantly from your smartphone. Yeah. People are posting albums of you know I'm standing out here right now. Look right over there, and I mean this is like real time. So just just real quick, um, I'm looking at Yahoo Oregon, mm -hmm. two thousand eight hundred eighty-seven. People have liked their page. Two of my friends have, and then it comes down and says friends, photos, posts, and check-ins. And I have 14 friends that have recently posted pictures, checked in, or posted something about the city of Yahats. And if I were to like that page, all their activity shows up on my newsfeed, and I see it every time. Mm -hmm. this is it's it's huge huge networking, and it, and, it, and 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 I certainly understand. Because I'm not a huge Facebook person, but it's powerful, and, and I've learned in my own business, this is the way of the future of how people are are doing things, is the social media. It, it, it's the way to take you from one step to the next. Okay, we can uh, go on with the accolades all day on this uh, mm -hmm. computer thing. Personally, I'm from the age where the... Had the round pole in the street and had the one <coughs> drawn. 
but uh, I don't know what to think about it. You know, just from personal experience on the page? Yeah, I know. I know until so they ripped the thing off the pole. Just take <laughs> but anyway, let's let's make up our mind about uh, one or two that one and then to approach sure. and do it. Uh, otherwise, we could be here forever and ever and spending money on all these different uh, avenues of approach. So I'd like motion? to make a motion. That would be a good idea. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move that we immediately uh, post uh, the openings for Harbor Commission on our, our website, uh, that we immediately feed that to the online blogs, Dave Morgan and um, Larry Coonrod, and that we post that uh, in the uh, post office. Thank you. All right, I think we had enough discussion, haven't we? Call, please. Brad? Aye. King? Yes. Fisher Brown? Yes. <laughs> Wilson? Yeah. Maslow? Yes. Gambino? Yes. And don't put the whipping and flogging on the page. No. Yeah. 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 That's a different feed. New business. On to item A, Neighbors for Kids, rented a request to remove the revisionary clause from the property deed. Uh, Bob, if you assume you want to come up. Okay, thank you. Sign in, please. Um, Thank you very much. much. Yes. I'm uh, Bob Houston, and I live at uh, 215 Tillicum Street, 97341. It's in Lincoln Beach. I'm also affiliated with Neighbors for Kids. I'm a volunteer there since about uh, 2010, and I'm currently the chairman and the president of the organization. Um, and uh, just a bit of history. Some of you might know of the history behind how we got our piece of property, but some might not. So I, was, I, I, I gave a packet to you guys, and I, I know it's not too lengthy, but I wanted to touch on these items. <clears throat> um, first of all, the city gave us the piece of property, essentially deeded the piece of property to Neighbors for Kids, and that is our home now. And uh, you know, we've been fortunate enough to uh, build a new building and raise the money to have that building as a debt-free asset on that piece of property. And it's, it's home to uh, our staff and our kids and, and all the things that we do in the building. So that's a wonderful gift and one that keeps giving back to us. And we hope to make it a you know, mutually beneficial setup so that we give as much to the city as we get. Um, and with that in mind, um, I know some of you have been in our building and been there during the time when the kids are there. You're certainly all welcome any time to come <coughs> visit the building, and particularly after um, the bus hits down and the kids are in the building and we've got our programming going. It's a, it's a wonderful place and a wonderful thing to see uh, uh, the kids of our community um, involved in the kind of programs that we've been able to put together. It's good professional teaching and, and great curriculum for the kids. So please feel free just rap on the door and uh, introduce yourself and somebody will take you around and show you what's happening. And um, <clears throat> Along those same lines, um, last year I think we uh, hosted the Rewarding Cities group and that was a, a nice um, perk for us to have people from all over in our building and I know, I, I hope we did the city justice by hosting that as well. So that, that building is, um, you know, essentially we're the stewards of that building, but we paid for that building with public donations, money from the public generally, um, money from grant makers, and money from the federal government. We got one of the last earmarks. Uh, GO, GW <coughs> signed the earmark on Air Force One. It was one of the last ones to come out of Washington. It was about $200,000, and uh, um, you can call it pork barrel, but we call it, uh, you know, payment on our building. So. Um, so the history of the, of the parcel, um, I went back to about 1955 and looked at the deed records, um, and the history I compiled here is just from 1982 forward, but the um, Ainsley family owned a piece of property uh, in, clear back in 55 they owned it, and, um, but I think this snapshot that I've chosen here from 82 forward is really kind of tells the story of what happened. Um, the Ainsley's owned the property and uh, deeded it to the city of Depot Bay. 
in previously that there, there was a couple other deeds in the back where they initially deeded it to the water district uh, with the reversionary clause on their deed that said, you know, if, it, if the city doesn't use it for water district purposes, it reverts back to the Ainsley's. And then, and then later, um, the city of Deep, or the water district deeded it back to Ainsley's, and then they redeeded it to the city of Depot Bay um, on this deed in 1982. And, and uh, it, it, it had a reverter clause on it, the same sort of thing that we've got. And it basically was from Helen Ainsley to city of Depot Bay. Um, And it, it, the reverter clause is um, no consideration is being given for this deed. So the city didn't pay for it. They get, it was gifted to them. Uh, uh, the intent of the grantor being to make a gift hereof to the grantee so long as the grantee uses the aforesaid premises in accordance with the express conditions set forth above, but it's really below, um, to be used by the city of Depot Bay primarily for and in support of the municipal water system including construction, reconstruction, maintenance, storage, administrative purposes in relation thereto. In addition, the city may use the property for other municipal utility purposes. Provided, however, in the case of violation of the aforetold condition, the conveyance shall thereupon become null and void, become void and the title to the premises and the whole thereof shall revert back and revest in the grant or so. The city got it as a gift to use for city water purposes. Uh, and if they, if they didn't use it for city water purposes, Ainsley's got it back. It's much like the reverter hat that we have on our deed, making a grant to the city. If we don't use it for neighbors for kids' purposes, it goes back to the city. Later, um, there was a revision or a modification of the reversionary clause. And Ainsley's, I think, broadened out what they were willing to allow the city to do. Um, and it's, it says, the express condition that the premises shall be used for city purposes, much more general, provided, however, that the city may from time to time lease the premises to, to a nonprofit organization or association engaged in activities for the improvement of the city of people Bay and its residents. And, and Neighbors for Kids first occupied the building as a lessee. Um, I think we were, this is be, predates my being there, but if you paid a dollar a year in the lease, and I don't know how long we would le lease the building, you may have recollection yeah, of that. It was Neighbors Against Drugs. Right, yes. Um, originally, that there was a lease. Yes. And it was um, like a, a ongoing lease, no, no time frame. And right. then we had a 20-year lease, and then we had a 50-year lease, and then we ended up needing the property. Yeah, the property. Yeah. And, so in this chain of title, the next document uh, was circa 2006, and this is essentially, I think, the heirs of Helen Ainsley. Oh no, it's Helen Caldwell, who formerly known as Helen Ainsley, who so maybe remarried or took back a maiden name or whatever. But um, and, and this document is the release of the reverter clause. So the city evidently asked uh, Ainsley to re release the reverter clause and give the city full use of the property, whatever they chose to do with it. That it wasn't a city request. That was how. Okay, it, I'm making some of this up because well, I just don't no, know. Well, and, and, yeah. and I, I, I'm aware of it, so I'm yeah. just going to butt in. Great, but, please do. Um, yeah. Helen was at a point in her life where she was putting her affairs in order. Okay. And the last time, every time we have a new use in the building, because the Chamber of Commerce was in there, and the Lincoln County Economic Alliance was in there, and so every time that. When, when Neighbors for Kids came in, we would write a letter to Helen and say, this is, we would describe what, what the entity would be doing and ask she would sign off her approval. And at, at that point in time, Helen said, it was it was the last time we had asked, okay, now we got Neighbors for Kids, and mm -hmm. they're gonna, and she, she signed off on that, and she said, you know, I just wanna be done with that. And so she actually initiated okay. removing it because she was at that point in her life. But yeah, so sure. bottom line, the reversionary clause was removed. Her daughter is the one that actually finalized it. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. And, and then um, the, the next deed in this chain of title is, is the grant um, from the City of Eagle Bay to Neighbors for Kids. Um, 
this this is uh, 2010, and I think it coincided with our building kind of being finished or under construction at least. That's about the time you guys got the grant. Yeah. Because the old building was on there when it was deeded. Yeah. Right, and the old building was there when we finished the new building, and then mm -hmm. the old building was our parking lot, so we yeah. raised it. Um, so the reversionary clause that the city placed on the deed, um, and I'm understanding more now after reading some recent statutes, the city is, uh, must put a reversionary clause on it, is that right? Um, I don't know if there's a requirement to put one in, yeah. um, but what, what um, Bob and I talked about, we all have a copy of that statute. If there is one place, yeah. there's that 20 year window year. of time before it can be removed. Right. But I, I don't know if it's actually required, honestly. Okay. But there is one. Okay, there is one. There it is. Um, so the, our, our reverter clause is, this conveyance is nonetheless upon the express condition that the premises are to, to be used for neighbors for kids, primarily for and in support of its educational and enrichment programs for a Depot Bay Area children, including Kids Zone After School Program for K-7 grade, uh, Teen Zone After School pro Program for 7th to 12th grade, tutoring academic support, rowing club, teen recreation night, monthly uh, supervised recreation program for teens, Ronald Austin Neeson Memorial Scholarship Fund intended to aid in beyond uh, high school education. In addition, neighbors for kids may use the property for other neighbors for kids sponsored activities that are in support of its children's education enrichment programs. I think that is essentially fundraising. Um, if the grantee, that's us, fails to comply with the foregoing condition, or if the above described property or any material portion of it is used for purposes other than children's educational enrichment programs, or should Neighbors for Kids discontinue its programs for a period of more than 12 months, consecutive months, bona fide construction, reconstruction, remodel, and other activities accepted, uh, the conve this conveyance shall th thereupon become void and the title to the premises and the whole thereof automatically revert or revest in the grantor. So the reversion happens and it goes back to the city. Believe me, we are happy to have the property and, and this initially, this reversion clause initially was no more where on our radar, radar because um, our budget was small and we had uh, a, a fairly easy time making our budget each year uh, and we did it with small uh, fundraising activities and writing grants um, and that sort of thing. The more demanding our budget got, the more we felt the need to use the free and clear asset, or the debt-free asset, which is our building, to find some sort of leverage. And when this really became acute is, um, a couple years ago, uh, as we as the use of our building ramped up, we started to really um, burden our nine parking spaces that we have in the building. And so if we had larger events, we would fill up our parking lot, and sometimes the parking would bleed over in, into Mr. Hong's property at the gas station. Usually these evening events, he would be closed, and and he was he was okay with us doing that. He just wouldn't ever give us any sort of a an easement to allow us to park there. Um, um, and as we grew, uh, we also found need kind of for a higher use of our building or a more complete use of our building. And part of what we had our our eyes on and in a community sense was we, we felt like it would be nice to be able to have some sort of assembly in the building where we have large larger number of people. And that that use under the L, uh, the um, light industrial zoning in which we occupy the building um, is a conditional use. And we applied for and were given a conditional use. And the conditional, conditional use under that zoning is called uh, a community center. And although you know we try to make it very clear we're not interested in com competing with the, the community center in any way, we want to be able to have larger numbers of people in our building. And so that larger number of people demanded that we have additional parking. Um, and not only the additional parking, but it had to be within 500 feet of the exterior boundary of our property. And we, we tried several ways to get that handled. Um, uh, Dick Cutler, who's got a piece of property on 101, uh, said, you can use my property for parking and I'll, you know, I'll make a formal one in terms of a permit easement or whatever, uh, and but it turned out his property was 50 feet outside of the 500 feet boundary, so we couldn't we couldn't make that work. 
so we set out looking for a piece of property to buy for a parking lot. And really, within the 500 feet, there was one property that we could buy, and we bought it. It's from the Knott, Knott brothers, Nathan and Ryan Knott, who own the rest of that sandy fit deflation plane, and they're, I think they've got a current permit for 400 storage units. Uh, that, that's their plan to build. Um, so we bought, we bought the property, and it was written on a three-year contract with the Knotts, and we, we made uh, 18 months worth of $200 payments, uh, no interest, and the second 18 months was $400 payments at 6% interest, and then we were supposed to balloon, pay it off in a balloon. And honestly, none of us at Neighbors for Kids understood how hard it would be to find anybody who wanted to donate for a gravel parking lot. It's not exactly the most exciting piece of uh, um, community resource, so uh, we had a terrible time finding money to pay for the parking lot. And this is when the, the reverter clause starts to really be a burden on neighbors for kids. Because we've got, you know, we, we were given the piece of property, and I don't know what it was worth when we were given it, gifted it. It was probably a couple hundred thousand, a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, pick a number. Um, we built the building and pushed the value somewhere to eight or nine hundred thousand. And um, it's debt free, but, you know, as we try to go to, to lenders and say, can you refire our parking lot? Because we're coming up against a, a three year balloon. Nobody's interested in it because of the reverter clause. And the reverter clause, I mean, I'll look, commercial lenders particularly look at every loan as whoever's borrowing the money is going to default. That's their position from which they structure the loan. Uh, uh, and, you know, they, they look at the reverter clause and say, if we, if we default on the loan, we have to take the property back. We've got to run a kid zone. And that's probably not what the lenders want to do. So uh, it kind of took our ability away to borrow um, commercial money. We have, it, it, let's see, the, the, the three years came and went, and we didn't have the money to pay for the parking lot, to pay off the balloon. And I went back to the Knott brothers, and they, in their goodness and, and gracious nature, gave us a one year extension, which runs out December 31st of this year. And uh, again, we beat the bushes and you know put up a crowdfunding request on the internet and uh, talk to all of our supporters. And we, we raised some of the money. And finally, um, at kind of the 11th hour, one of our uh, true strong supporters said, I'll loan you the money to pay off the parking lot. Um, and when we got down to the point that I disclosed to him that the building prop parcel is that he wanted to use for security as a loan, had a reverter. He said, well, really, that's, you know, that's um, uh, ineffective for me as security because, you know, if I have to take the property back, I either have to run it as a kid zone or um, give it back to the city. So we worked with him, and he finally decided, agreed to give us the loan and take this, our parking parcel as security and the building and and so now we've refinanced that parking lot debt. That's a huge weight off of us. Uh, he's given us a 20-year loan, 2% interest, uh, and um, and so that that's relieved some pressure. Uh, he also indicated to us that he would give us a line of credit type loan if the property had no reverter clause on it. The line of credit is really important to a nonprofit because um, the the nature of a nonprofit is. You know, every penny we spend, we got to raise. And so we're in constant fundraising mode, writing grants, working with uh, supporters. <clears throat> but it's uneven. And so sometimes the money rolls in and sometimes it's, it dries up. And we just went through a period uh, at the end of this summer where um, our fundraising uh, hit a low point. Our cash got really, really short. So. Um, this, this idea of having a, a line of credit loan in the background secured by our building um, that would allow us to, say, have $40,000 line of credit that if we got into a jam and our fundraising uh, was at a low point that we could call in the line of credit to make payroll and pay our bills until the, you know, the fundraising comes back around. That's the nature of where we're at. Um, So the solution in my mind was to come to the city of Depot Bay and say, you know, 
uh, we, we'd like we'd like to release the reverter clause. I think I, after the day I brought the packets in, Peary Peary said I think there's there's some uh, ORS statutes on it that you should see, and that was the first time I had uh, seen the 20 year the the the, the ORS essentially mm -hmm. says. The city can release a reversionary clause if the property, if it's been in place more than 20 years. So we're clearly, you know, only five or six years into the 20 year wait period. So um, I don't know actually what we can do now um, besides look at possible creative solutions. And, um, <coughs> so I appreciate the opportunity to come and talk a little bit about what we're doing and what we're hoping for. And I think there will be. Uh, you know, it needs to be some sort of a legal mind look at that and explain or to understand how that uh, piece of ORS affects us. So I don't know if, if you guys have an attorney that can look at it, or um, I suppose we can find we can find out, talk to our attorney too. We've got a we got one who sits on our board. Um, I don't know that there's any relief though. Go ahead. Uh, is there now after the, the I'm, I'm just wondering it's probably been looked at if there's any um, potential of offering a bond to the citizens within the city boundaries um, as a measure to you know one time bond uh, with a modest expiration date to, to uh, raise the funds and, and uh, pay off the, uh, uh, is, is get you guys some funding to pay off the parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know if that's a possibility or not. I've never even thought about a bond. I know you know has possible is pass a whopper. Oh, the, so did the uh, fire department. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I never go through. I'm doing it my tax bill. <laughs> But it's got the clock a miles open, so to speak. Um, but if the people of the city of Depot Bay thought it was a worthwhile cause, uh, I could see them uh, supporting it. But I don't know if it's possible. I don't either. Yeah. You know, we just want to be self sufficient. We want to find a, a smooth path to keep ourselves funded and continue to offer the programming and you know, do what we do. Uh, Barry, directed to you. That building that was there before they put up the, the new structure was there for considerably longer than 20 years, wasn't it? Oh, I believe so. <laughs> and, and then uh, would, wouldn't that under the ORS qualify for that, for that 20 years and, and then we could do the reversionary uh, thing in council? Uh, not the way I read the statute. That it, it, it's, from the day it was granted. Uh, yes, from the day the reversionary clause was in, installed in a deed, basically. So, you know, we were in, I think, year six and in county. Well, okay, then that being said, uh, uh, another avenue of approach with the council's permission uh, would be to, to uh, hand it over to our attorney and see if he can yes. find something that would move out the ocean, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I think Zeke and I had a convo about, um, you know, the, the, the statute makes no sense to me. It, it doesn't seem to hang on anything. That the, what's the 20 years all about? And, I made the point that, yeah. that it's, to present, it's to prevent exactly what we're trying to do here today. <laughs> That's what the statute's all about. Mm. Because of the nature of yeah, just it's just about the government subdivisions. Having elected officials that come in and out of office. And yeah, run. if you read it, it says political subdivisions, that's us. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was also the crowd that uh, gave us, gave you the building and set the uh, revisionary clause. And that was Jim White and right. Debbie Davlin's administration. Right. And I said to Bob that uh, far be it for us to uh, try to retroactively understand why they would include this, because it was a choice. This reverted, they didn't have to put it in there. They didn't have to, I, I don't know. The way I read it, I don't know if 
they had to put that the, in the ordinance. The, the, the city at the time adopted a resolution that said essentially that the city will live by the ORS statutes, right. 271, 333, and 335, or something right. like that. And those were the statutes. One talks about the city's ability to grant property away, and it, it, had, it lists um, some entities that they could grant to, one of which is an educational facility. And then it, uh, the next statute talks about um, you know, the 20-year reversionary clause release. If I might, I think the, the 20 years is also referred to in the, the statute 271.330, which is, um, that's the section of the statute that when, when the city uh, deeded the property to NFK, it was under the authority of that statute. Right. Um, and it says in there that any political subdivision is granted the express power to relinquish the title to any of the political subdivisions property not needed for public use to any governmental body, providing the property shall be used for not less than 20 years for a public purpose. So that's another part of where they, they there's, there's in the statute, there's a 20 year, they keep talking about 20 years. So that's when the city would be to another government entity. There's a 20 year time limit on that too. You've got to use it for public purposes. And then the section two, um, specifically of 271.330, where it says that a political subdivision can can deed property to a nonprofit uh, for mm -hmm. low income housing, for social services, or child care yes. services. So then there's, it, you know, there's no requirement. I didn't read a requirement where you would have a reversionary clause in a deed. But if there is one, then you get yeah. to that section that that. You got 20 years. Right. You're locked in for 20 years 20 before years. you can, move, can remove it. And then the governing body can remove it, but not shorter than 20 years. So, yeah. Very the, interesting. The, uh, when, you, when you see the word property, I see one thing, and that's a plot of ground. Mm -hmm. Does that property have to have a building on it uh, for transfer of ownership or reversionary clause? Or Real property. Uh, this is really a question for the attorney. Go ahead. Yeah, and I, I'd like to make a motion. I move that we uh, refer this to the city attorney for two considerations. One, is there some way to mitigate that revisionary clause? And two, I like Jerome, Mr. Grant's idea. Uh, I'd like to have our, our attorney look at potentially floating a bond. I, I like that idea. I think that's a, an interesting idea. And that's my motion. Second. Call, please. Team. Yes. Fisher Brown. Yes. Olson. Yeah. Mackle. Yes. Cambino. Yes. Grant. Aye. And let it be for the record that the city council supports you now. Thank they you. Do. Thank well, a lot of you. We appreciate program. that so much. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Well, appreciate the uh, opportunity to come and talk and talk about our problem over there, but. Um, it's, it's not a fatal flaw, and, uh, you know, um, initially when I, when I started thinking about this reverter clause, I, I assumed that, that it was in place to make sure that, uh, you know, the city didn't give uh, an entity a piece of property and then they would later dispose of it and, you know, head for Reno, you know. But, um, so, I, you know, at that point I was thinking we've been a good steward of that property and we continue to be, um, on, on our mission uh, as the reverter clause is requested. And uh, so really it's our intention to be there forever. And um, you know, we, we would like to find a path of uh, adequate funding to get there. And so what we talked about tonight should help. So thank you. Mr. Houston, thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item B, our uh, heartfelt gratitude to Debbie Metz for her service uh, in the fleet of flowers on behalf of the citizens of Deepo Bay. And uh, I think this 
uh, several years of very hard, intense uh, love of labor that this citizen of our city put in on this. I, whatever, uh, I, I'd like not to just see uh, a letter or a plaque or something like that, but something that would uh, uh, really give her a, a feeling of, well, thank you for uh, for your service and whenever she looks at it, something that would really be worthwhile. Uh, uh, what that something is, I don't know, but there's uh, several lines sitting in here. I'm not sure we can figure it out. Well, can we have a wall of honor in City Hall where we can post some of these pictures kind of like what we have up here where citizens like this, we can have a wall of honor and post their names, the flowers, gates of service, and in City Hall? I don't know. We don't. No. What about uh, one of our beaches that overlooks the harbor or the bay? 